Hey guys, welcome back to week two of our Arise Bible Study. I'm Pastor Amy and this is Abby. Hi. And she's gonna be doing our Bible study with us today. I'm so glad you guys are here. Remember that our series is called WDJS and you weren't here last week, Abby. So WDJS stands for What Does Jesus Say? And it's actually a, a study of the red letters. So do you know what the red letters of the Bible mean? Um, that it's Jesus talking. Yes, that it's Jesus talking. And that's what we're learning about is what Jesus said. So last week, you guys remember that we learned about the righteous deeds that God wants us to do that are right before him, right? They're not things that will save us, but they're things that help us grow more like Jesus. So I'm going to count to three. And I want you guys to think really fast, because when I count to three, I want y'all to yell out as many of the righteous deeds that we learned last week that you can remember. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three. That was pretty good. I don't know if it was as loud as it could have been, but that was pretty good. If you yelled out giving or praying or fasting or forgiving, if you remembered all of them, great job. Okay, so let's move on and see what Jesus has to say today, okay? So what are we gonna need? We always need in Arise Bible Studies. We need our Bible, right? So everybody needs to get your, your Bible. We um, always have our notebook with us in case we need to write something down. And we have principles this week. So this week we have three different printables. You're also going to need scissors to cut. You're gonna need glue, a pen, of course a highlighter, because you know how I like that for you to highlight in your Bible. Um, so gather all your stuff together. If you don't have your printable, you can go to arisekids.org and you can um, print those out. So go ahead and pause right now, get all your stuff together so we can read. Okay, great job guys. Let's open up in prayer. Okay, so everybody bow your heads. Father, we just come to you. We thank you so much for this opportunity to study about you and to learn all the words of Jesus. And I just thank you, Father, you'll be with us, that you will help us to learn more about you, to grow closer to you, and that you will just become alive in all of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Awesome. Okay, so everybody, get your Bibles. We're going to open up to Matthew, which is in, which one? Old or New Testament? New, so it's in the it's actually the first book of the New Testament. Remember Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So we're going to Matthew. We're going to chapter six, okay? So let's go to chapter six. Again, if you need time, pause the video, look it up. I want everybody to be there to get your highlighters and all of that. So while you're looking, we're gonna start with a game. Do you guys like games? Do you like games? Yeah. I like games. They're pretty fun. Um, so I'm going to put up a picture on your screen, okay? And I want you to focus on it, like really focus. Like look at it, study it. There's going to be a test on it later, okay? So you ready? Here it is. Okay. Now that you've studied it, who can tell me what color the Bible is? Don't think about it. You saw the picture. You studied it. What color was the Bible? Do you remember? No, I don't remember. You know, she doesn't remember. Anybody? Nobody remembers? There were a lot of pictures, right? There was a lot of things on that picture. So many that it was kind of hard to focus on just one thing. Okay, so one more little test. I'm going to show you another picture. You ready? Go. Okay, so you had some time to study. What was that on the picture? I don't know. No idea? Why does everybody keep failing my tests? I didn't think it was very hard. So it was blurry. Do you, did the picture, it was blurry, right? It wasn't focused. So that must mean focus is kind of important, right? You know, the first pick had way too many things to focus on. And so you couldn't tell me what color the Bible was. The second picture was completely out of focus. So you have no idea what was on that picture. So let's, let's get, you know, in the Bible now and see what this has to do with what Jesus said. So let's read together. Follow along with me as I read. We're gonna start in verse 22. So Matthew 6, verse 22, ready? It says, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Now grab your handy dandy highlighters. You know how I love those, okay? Let's highlight the word healthy. And 
You know, in every version of the Bible I read, that word was different. So your word might be different there. Some said good, some said honest, some said clear. So I looked it up in the Greek. And this is just a fun little fact. Did you know that the New Testament was actually written in Greek first? Did you know that? It was actually written in Greek first and then it was translated into our language. So sometimes the words that we're reading in the different versions don't mean the exact thing that it's in there or it has multiple things that it means. So I always like to look it up in the Greek to find out, you know, what exactly is Jesus trying to tell me here? Okay, so in the Greek, that word healthy means single. Everybody say single. Single. Hold up a finger. Single, just single. one, single. That means, and it means in there, a single undivided focus. And then another meaning is unfolded. Everybody say unfolded. Unfolded. And then let's find like, hold up one of your pieces of paper that you got, your paper. It's just a single piece of paper and it's not folded. Another meaning is simple. Everybody say simple. Simple. And think about that picture with all those images on there. Was that very simple? It was not very simple. Let's look at that picture again, okay? And see if you can even find the Bible on the picture. Okay, look at it. Can you even find it? Okay, I mean, you might have, I don't know, but it's not that easy, okay? So the scripture in Matthew 6, basically is saying, first, your eye is the lamp of the body. So what, what is a lamp? What is it, it lights up. It, yes, it does, it lights things up, right? It's, if it's dark and you can't see, maybe you're walking around your house at night, you might have to turn on the lamp, right? So that you don't fall over onto something. So it's saying that your, your eye is the, the lamp for your body. It's what lights up your body, it's what leads you. So then it says, if your eye is single or simple or singly with a single undivided focus, then your body will be full of life and bright. Your path is going to be well lit. So everybody say that single focus. Single focus. That's right, single focus. Now, let's look at the picture again. And this time let's remove all those extra things, okay? And make the one thing we're looking at larger. So here it is. Now what do you see? I see a blue Bible. Exactly. Just the blue Bible. There's just one thing to look at and you can focus on that one thing. Too many distractions can cause us to focus on the wrong thing or not to be able to focus at all. So everybody yell, focus. Focus. Yell it louder. Focus. Louder. Focus. Okay, good. Now, let's see what Jesus says next, okay? Matthew 6, chapter, chapter 6, verse 23. Follow along with me. It says, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And bad here means evil, wicked, malicious, lazy. So it says if your eye is not singularly focused, it is evil in your whole body, instead of being led by and full of light, it's actually full of darkness, like being blind, okay? So let's keep reading and see what Jesus is even talking about here. Verse 24 kind of gives us a clue about what he's talking about. He says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Everybody say money. Money. So we see what Jesus is talking about when he says a singular focus, okay? Because then he tells us the things that we need to focus on and what we shouldn't. He says, you know, you can't have two masters. You shouldn't have two things that are leading you. A master is somebody who's in charge of you, leading you. And so either Jesus is or maybe money is, okay? So I looked up that word money, because you know, I like to look stuff up in the Greek. And do you know what it means? What? It means the treasure a person trusts in. So it's not just like money as in like the things you spend. It can be like anything that you put over God. Yes, like anything that you're, that you're putting your trust in. So anything we trust in more than God. So everybody say money, money, money. Money, money, money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's pause for an activity, okay? So you should have a paper, Abby, and you guys should have it too, that's labeled two masters. Do you have that one? So two master paper has one column that says God and one column that says money. So you're gonna need a pen or a pencil right now. And I want you to talk about and think about what it is that you need and want that you can buy with money, that you, you know, everyday life, think about what it is that you 
that you have to have that costs money. I know what you're thinking. What's your first thing you're gonna put on there? Oh, Chick-fil-A. Wait, what do you mean? I was thinking shoes. Shoes, oh, shoes and Chick-fil-A. She does love shoes. So, okay. so think about all those things, right? That, that you need, you want in your life that has to do with money. And then on the God side, I want you to think of, write down the things that are right before God, the things that, you can start with what we talked about last week, like praying and fasting. Like those are things that God wants us to do. See, those are good things that don't have anything to do really with with money, money. yeah. With, you can't buy it, okay? You can't, things you can't buy. Okay. And so I want you to just pause the video now and you can write a list or you can draw pictures, whatever you wanna do that just kinda separate God and money. All right, great job you guys. Abby finished up a few things. Um, on her paper and I hope you guys did the same. So let's keep reading and see what's next, okay? So we are to Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 through 27 and it says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Wow. First, I want everybody to highlight the phrase, do not be anxious. Okay? That means don't worry. He says, don't worry so much about the things. And he mentions what you will eat. So he mentions the first thing on your list, Chick-fil-A. Abby brought up a good point. Some of the Bibles don't say do not be anxious, they say don't worry. And that means the same thing, okay? So highlight it in your Bible. Well, the scripture says, first of all, it says don't worry about what you eat, right? <laughs> That's Chick-fil-A. So don't worry about what you're gonna eat and drink, not wear. what you're gonna wear, which is your shoes, right? Because it says, he says don't worry about those things because they're things you can buy with money. He says look at the birds. God takes care of them. That's what he says. So I want you to pause here and I want you to cut out the birds from your activity page. Okay? You guys have a page that says cut it out. So let's cut out all of our birds. Okay, great. So let's, let's read on. Verse 28. You ready? Okay. Verse 28 says, And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Okay, so I want everyone to highlight the phrase there again, why are you anxious or why do you worry? He says it again, okay? He says it, this time he doesn't talk about birds, he talks about lilies. He said God clothes them or makes them beautiful. And he even calls them a little faith. That's kind of insulting. You know, if I told you, Abby, you have no faith. You're such a little faith. But Jesus tells them, don't be of little faith. When we're worried and anxious, that's showing God basically we're not trusting in him. And the, we're, our faith isn't big enough. So we have to kind of work on that. So this time, I want you to pause it again, and I want you to cut out all the flowers from your activity page, okay? And I'll tell you what to do with them later. Now, let's move on to verse 31. Can you find it? Chapter 6, verse 31, and it says, Oh, it says, don't worry again. It does. <laughs> it says, therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? Chick-fil-A? What shall we drink? Starbucks? What shall we wear? Really cool Nike shoes? <laughs> Verse 32 says, For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. So again, what do you think I'm going to have you highlight? Do not worry. Do not worry, or do not be anxious. He says it again, okay? He already knows what we need, and he is telling us over and over and over, you think we're going to get it, right? So let's look back at your two masters page where you wrote down the things that cost money and the things that are only from God. So look at the, the side that says money. 
Okay, everything that you wrote down that you need money. These are all the things that Jesus has already told us not to be anxious about or not to worry about. He said in his word, we just read it, that he's going to take care of us better than the birds and the flowers, right? So I want you to take the birds and the flowers that you cut out, and I want you to glue them, one bird or one flower, onto each thing that you, maybe next to it, um, or right over it, however you want to do it. Just put some birds and flowers onto your two masters page to remind you that even though you have need of these things and you have to have money to get them, God is already in control. He knows you need them and he's gonna take care of you better than the birds, okay? But I want you to save a couple of birds and a couple of flowers for our secret place prayer wall that we made last week, okay? Because we're gonna glue those on. Also, to remind you when you go to your secret place and you're praying, and you're looking at it and maybe you're feeling worried, you can look at the birds and the flowers and remember that God takes care of them, so he's gonna take care of you. Okay, great job. Let's look at Matthew 6, 33 and 34. Ready? It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Again, what phrase are we gonna highlight? Do not be anxious, do not worry. He said it so many times. I think he means it, don't you think? Yeah. Now, do you see that in 33? He says in verse 33, the key. He said how we can get all the things we need and please God, it's right there, it's your memory verse. So let's look at it again, Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all those other things are gonna be added to you. So there's that word righteousness that we talked about last week. Y'all remember that word from last week? Jesus told us what not to do. He said, don't be anxious. Don't be focused on too many things. He said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. His righteousness, which is what is right before God, which is what we've talked about. And it's probably a lot of it is in your God section of your two masters, maybe praying, faith, those kind of things you can't buy with money is what we need to stay focused on, okay? I want you to get your activity page with the frame on it. So do you see your framed Jesus page? Very nice. So here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna get this Jesus page and I want you to talk about all those things that are right before God. And I want you to write them down on that paper. Maybe it's walking in love, maybe it's faith or patience, anything that you can think of that is right before God. There's a church on there, so maybe going to church is one of them. Worship, so many different things that God wants you to do. Okay, so pause the video, fill out that paper, and then I'll tell you what to do next. Okay, I hope you had a little bit of time to write some things down. Now here's what we're gonna do. I want you to take this paper where you've written all of these things and I want you to fold it in half. Can you do that? Like this? Either way you want, it doesn't matter. Fold it, fold it over. There you go. All right, now take that fold that you have, take your pen, and I want you to write one of the things on the outside that you want to buy with money. Think about something that you want right now. That if you had a million dollars, you would buy it right now. A video game, a new pair of shoes. She wrote Chick-fil-A again, guys. That's how far the addiction goes, okay? Okay, that's good. Don't write too many things, just... Okay. Oh, oh, Chick-fil-A and Jordans, okay? Fold it again, fold your, your Jesus paper again. Write something else that you would buy right now if you had a million dollars or whatever, something that costs money. Write it down. Disney, okay. Disney World tickets. Disney World tickets, okay? Awesome. Fold it again, write something else. Okay, I want you to keep folding and keep writing until it's so small and so folded that you can't fold it anymore. Okay, so if you need to pause, pause. Keep writing and keep folding. Okay, now, so you've got it folded, right? There, now look at it, Abby, look at it really close. Can you see Jesus? No. You cannot see Jesus anymore. Can you see Jesus? Right? <laughs> I don't think anybody can. Okay, but well can you see any of the things on your list that are right before his eyes? Can you see no, anything? Because it's closed. It's all folded up, right? Do you remember at the beginning of this lesson when we read Matthew 6, 22, and I told you what the word healthy meant? We read the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light, right? And I told you one of the meanings was of healthy was unfolded. 
right? That was one of the meanings that we did. Does this look unfolded and simple to you? No, no it's folded many times. It's, it's, it's so full of the things you need, right? It's so full of everything that you need is, is written on there. It's crowded and folded. Yeah, everything you think you need. That's really good. It's so folded and you can't see Jesus, right? Because we're, we're not singular. We're not singularly focused anymore. Okay, so if my eye is the light of my whole body and it's folded and unfocused and unable to see Jesus, how am I gonna be able to follow him, right? So I want you to slowly unfold that paper. And there's two things while you're unfolding your papers, two main things I want you to remember. Number one, stay focused on Jesus, his ways, his righteousness, what's right before him. And then number two, what do you think my number two point is? What did I have you highlight over and over and over again? Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't be anxious about all of these things, okay? So what I want you guys to remember is unfold your lives today, okay? Unfold your lives and remember what's the most important. What do you think the most important thing is? Jesus. It's Jesus and he's right there in the middle of your paper. That's awesome, guys. So guess what? It's challenge time again. Everybody loves a good challenge, okay? Do you like challenges? Okay, so here's your challenge for today. You can work in your class or alone at home, but what I want you to do and you have a list of several different activities you can do, but my favorite one that I wanna challenge you to do this week is to write a letter to somebody who you know is worried about something. Do you have friends or people that you can think of that maybe have something that they worry about a lot or, you know? I want you guys to use these scriptures in Matthew that we were just reading as encouragement for them, okay? Write the scripture, but then add your own words and your own reasoning. Maybe you could even draw or glue in a bird or a flower to go along with it, just to encourage them. Because everybody needs encouragement. You know, sometimes you've needed encouragement. Sometimes I need encouragement. It doesn't matter who you are. Sometimes we need encouragement. And I want you guys to be the encouragement this week. So I want you to take what you learned here today about staying focused on God and not worrying or being anxious. And I want you to share that gift with somebody else by writing a letter. Mail it off, put it on their porch, hand it to them, whatever you wanna do, okay? Thank you again, guys, for studying with us. I'm proud of you, Jesus is proud of you. Remember, he has good plans for you and he will always be with you. We'll see you guys next week, bye!